Honorable Bobby Wine Chagurani, please stand up. Honorable Ken Chamzi. These are leaders of uh, sister parties. They have got their delegation that they have come with. I see a delegation from the Democratic Party, composed of uh, prominent uh, people. I see Honorable Kaku, Mukaku, Lvega seated on their side. Dr. Buanika, Honorable Mabike. I see the delegation from uh, People Power. The red caps themselves will tell you who is, as they sit there. <laughs> Nyanzi, I see him seated in the front. Member of Parliament for Tiana, Honorable Zake, and the rest of the delegation. It's an honor to have you here today, colleagues, because there's a This journey that we've been walking, tough as it has been, we've closely related with the leaders, giving them briefs, having discussions with them all the time. And whenever there are functions, they invite us and we go there. I also made assurances to them as the alliance that any time any of the leaders of these formations when they invite us for any discussion, we will be there at any point of day or night. Because we are involved in a common struggle. We may have different, uh, at times, ideologies, at times, methods. Nevertheless, we have a common purpose, which we all subscribe to. So before I even go into any further into the speech, I would like to make... Uh, a public pledge that as NT, even today, as we launch the new party, as I kept on briefing you, that even as we form ourselves into a party, that we look forward to working with you very closely, so that whatever is necessary for us to combine effort and be able to hasten the exit of this regime, and put this country back on track. Any place you invite us, we will be there. And therefore, it gives us pleasure for you to honor us today by your presence. Leaders of the civil society present, local council leaders from across the nation, party leaders and members of the Alliance for National Transformation, ladies and gentlemen, today is a particularly joyous day, not only for me personally, but for all men and women that have worked tirelessly over the past several months. They know that without joining hands in genuine partnership, no nation can hope to succeed. It is they it is they who have worked tirelessly in the gathering of signatures in going through the tough in some of the districts, the environments where state agents, not all the districts but quite a number of them while they bear all that, 
and got the signatures, and then we were patient. I think it's now 13 months since we started. Patience that you have exhibited, we thank you heartily for that, colleagues, ladies, and gentlemen. The tough times you went through have now bore fruit. Today, I wasn't even so sure that I, I would say much. Because whenever I go in a town called uh, Fort Potro, there's a place where I normally stay, it's called Le Joux. It's a hotel for nuns. On its wall, there are quite a number of writings. And one of them interested me most. And it says that work quietly and let success make the noise. I was not so sure that I should say much today, but being a launch, I try and be very brief. In late 2017, a number of colleagues and I announced that we were to begin a national consultative process to help us renew ourselves for making a lasting contribution to our country and the next generation. Not everyone agreed. Some argued that such methods of going across the country and seeking the opinion of hundreds of local leaders and ordinary people was not practical. And I said it is indecisiveness and showed they did not know how things worked in this country. They claimed that the country was too angry and that this anger, fear, and desperation should be the cornerstone of organizing change and resistance. But we did it anyway, going to 18 sub-regions and spending time with the people we hope to serve. We know people are angry and tired, but we also know that fear and anger quickly turn into hatred and prejudice. A fearful nation is sapped of its energy to seek change on its own terms. When neighbors turn on each other and national politics becomes a blame game, chaos is normalized. A constant state of anarchy occupies the daily efforts of even the most committed and bravest amongst us. This has been the story since independence. Ugandans have been preoccupied with their own divisions with little time to spare on how to forge ahead as a united force. Some of us are veterans of different struggles at various times in our recent past. We have fought in many wars and paid a person of prices for our convictions. However, no matter the sacrifices we have made individually, we recognize that real change only starts with unity. Unity itself is the revolution we have been waiting for. It is the only war worth fighting for. In some ways, it's the only war left in Uganda that has not yet been won. It is bigger than the war against poverty, against forces bearing arms, whether at home or abroad. It is the foundation of any great nation because it is true that united we stand, divided we fall. We can see that today we are a nation divided. In our consultations, we came to the conclusion that what Ugandans were saying 
is that they need a complete change of the political culture, a complete break with the past. They want to replace fear with confidence and begin to address their problems without worrying about the betrayal and selfishness of the person next to them. They're looking for a political organization with which they can work, no matter what background they come from. And so, in September 2018, we announced that we are beginning such a political formation. Ugandans supported us in this effort through their signatures, which allowed us to register on March 19th. That's when it became a new political party. The Alliance for National Transformation represents the hope that with unity, a new beginning is possible. I have said often that you cannot give what you do not have. We are thankful and grateful to those who have offered their time and commitment. They have shown through what has been achieved in this short period, what can be done when we work together to build on each other's strength instead of work against each other. Alliance for National Transformation will be a party that delivers on our promises. When we say we are going to consult citizens, we do not demand for money or hide in our homes. We have no reason to fear fellow citizens. We are not asking Ugandans to do the impossible. We are asking that they recognize that when working together, even the most difficult problems today can be overcome. We have had 57 years of broken promises, 57 years of turmoil, 57 years riddled with internal conflicts, Blood has been shed many times in this country. We've reached a point where our people have almost lost hope in us who are in leadership positions. We've reached a point where the population has lost trust in us as politicians. Currently, As we move forward, we are not even sure of how the transition is going to be managed. It's a question which is still under contestation. Whether it will be smooth, whether the country can slide into chaos, none of us is sure. And that's the worst place any country should find itself at. Where does it stem from? We have had 57 years of politics where there is inconsistency between theory and practice. We say one thing, we do something different. It has so completely eroded the faith and belief of our people that they can ever, they can never, ever have any politicians who can be in power and do what is right. The spirit of our people has been so crushed. At times when you go to places, doing campaigns, and you find that our people can give their vote <laughs> because they've been paid a thousand shillings, two thousand shillings, three thousand shillings. We are saying even five hundred. So one time we asked the areas where we were in some villages, what's the cost of a chicken? Because the peasants, the majority of them have chickens in their compounds. 
Most places, you find that the cost of a chicken is about 20,000, 25,000, 30,000. The question we pose to them is, look, you've given your vote for 1,000 shillings, but you own chicken, which is 30,000. That's the level to which our people have been downgraded. That someone who has some property, even the poorest, that is worth 30,000 shillings, but is going to set his right for 1,000 shillings. And colleagues, in the struggle, I think that is the toughest challenge we are going to face, even when we take power. Because to lift the spirits of the people, to regain self-confidence, to believe that there is nothing on earth that is impossible that they cannot achieve, to lift someone who is going to sell his or her right for a thousand shillings and elevate them to a level where they know that they can achieve whatever they put their heart to once there is a correct environment. The environment, yes, we must create. But for the people to believe, that's a tough task. And it is a task that we must embark on and keep at it until our population is able to rise and people can recover their sense of dignity, their sense of confidence in themselves. Most times, we criticize the current regime. We criticize General Museveni over many things which many things in most times are physical. Poor roads, lack of drugs, poor educational institutions, where they have done damage. But to me, the worst form of damage is when you crush the spirits of the people. That's where we are at. That's what we are continuing against. And that's what we must change in this country. And so, ladies and gentlemen, today, as you officially launch our party, once again, commit to the following. We, commend, we commit to end the tyranny of executive power throughout our young history, Ugandans have had to grapple with the excess of bad governance that come with consolidating power in the hands of one person, the president. If there is anything we have learned from this, it is that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We cannot continue to place our hope in the emergence of a benevolent dictator. Power must be vested in institutions institutions, not individuals. I repeat that. Power must be vested in institutions, not us, the individuals. We therefore will do everything in our power to ensure that executive privilege is reduced, that of local governments is increased, the judiciary and the parliament emboldened and the people empowered will not seek to have a one-man show. No single individual will be bigger than the collective. That's the culture I want to build in the Alliance for National Transformation. And we will make clear to our leaders that they are first among equals. Two. Radically change our education and health care systems. A healthy nation is the beginning of a healthy future, and in an, age, in an age where technology advances by the hour, we must prepare our children to compete with the best of the world. This calls for radical, radical thinking of our school curriculum to enable our children to identify, nurture, and exploit their talents from the very beginning. 
We must equip our children with the ability to not only use computers, but make apps by their teenage years. We must provide a conducive environment for our children to learn the arts, to grow in the knowledge of our local languages and traditions, and to begin envisioning the world not as one dominated by the West, to the detriment of the rest, but as a gift from God, in which they have as much a stake as any other human being on this planet. <clears throat> to do this, we must invest in retraining and equipping our teachers, paying them a salary that reflects the important role they play, and ensuring that our trust in them to mold our children is justified. Similarly, our health workers and health systems need to be radically rethought to ensure that our medical workers and hospitals once again become the envy of the continent. We have had enough of our mothers dying while giving life. Our sons and daughters dying before they reach their fifth birthday simply because they couldn't afford antimalarial treatment. We work towards ensuring that every Ugandan child goes to school, gets a world-class education, and lives a long and healthy life. Three, deal with the unemployment time bomb regardless of which side of the political, political spectrum you fall, it is impossible to deny the pervasive level of unemployment in our country. By some estimates, up to 80% of our people are unemployed or not gainfully employed. With the youngest population in the world, this means that the vast majority of our youth are living out the prime of their lives without purpose, Okay. This is unacceptable. Yet, where others see despair, we see opportunity. Uganda is the most entrepreneurial country in the world, and although most of our people's businesses do not live beyond their first year, it means that with the right skills and support, we can be a nation of industry and technological advancement. The expertise in the area of innovation and creativity in this country is amazing. There are so many young people who have so many amazing ideas in the area of creativity and innovation, but do not have an enabling environment and the funding to succeed. We intend to make this history. We will create a conducive environment and put in place mechanisms for funding innovations. We will fully support our innovative tech youth to become Zuckerbergs Jack Maas, Eva Spiegel's, Kevin Systrom's of this world. We were left out of the first three industrial revolutions. We intend to be active, successful participants in the fourth industrial revolution. The world should wait to see Achans, Katos, Sempijas, Ninsimas, Chandigas playing in that international league of creators and innovators. We are focused, disciplined, and purposeful. We would like to promise the youth of this country that we will come through on this. I am going to repeat this for emphasis.
the world should wait to see. A chance, katos, sempijas, nisimas, chandigas playing in that international league of creators and innovators. I repeat it a third time for emphasis. The world should wait to see a chance, katos, sempijas, nisimas, chandigas playing in that international league of creators and innovators. <laughs> there are many smart young men and women. I don't think I'm the one who bumps into them. I believe all of you bump into these young men and women who are amazing. But the environment is not conducive. There's nobody planning for them. The people who are in power are simply after self-interest. And they have sucked our country and eaten it to the core. And they, they talk about transformation. You cannot transform a country whose people's spirits have been crushed. You want to transform a country, you start with the people. You motivate them. You create a conducive environment. You put in place special purpose funds. To look at those who are innovators, to look at those who are creators and you fund them. Not because you want 10% from them, but you recognize that when they are innovative, when they are creative, when they do things and succeed, they create jobs, they create wealth. They bring pride to a people, they bring pride to a country. There is nothing that anybody on this planet has done that we are not able to do in this country and on this continent. All of us know young people who have been in the rest of the world, in the best universities in the world. Many, many Ugandans, many Tanzanians, many Kenyans. And they perform excellently. But those who come back to a place like this one cannot be innovative, cannot be creative, cannot succeed because of the environment. And that's where we must focus. So what I'm talking about, what I repeated three times, is not just politics. We must recover the sense of dignity as a people. There's no way going to recover that sense of dignity as a people until we get an environment where those young people can succeed. And you hear them internationally renowned. I can stand on this platform and tell you without any fear that by the grace of God we will achieve that. The Alliance will seek to find ways to bolster our people's skills so that every Ugandan that wants a job gets one. These are not the only policy priorities of the party. Today we are launching what? We are launching a policy guide. This book booklet gives the country an overview of the issues we want to focus on, why and how. It will be the beginning point of our conversations with Ugandans about how to build a country that works for everyone. Based on the regional, district, and village level engagements we have over the coming months, 
will further develop this guide into a policy platform that will be unveiled at our first National Delegates Conference. We know that this is a bold and ambitious plan. There may be people who are there that think that it is impossible, but it is important to remember that our nation's problems have always stemmed from settling for less instead of more. Ugandans are a strong people who have endured through some of the worst wars and dictatorships. We have weathered several storms that threatened to sweep us away. But it is time for us to do more than endure. We must do more than just survive. We must thrive as a nation. To do so, we must come together without fear. It's quite strange in this country where you find two forms of fear. Those who are in power are fearful of losing power. And they are doing everything human and possible to hang on to it. And then there are those who are led who are fearful of taking power. It's a strange world. And so the Alliance is committed to a new kind of politics in the country. Where others doubt, we hope. While some argue about the pr practicalities of our plans, we will act upon them. And brick by brick, working together with each new member, we will build a new future. One that works for every citizen. One that we are proud of. 57 years of independence. Our analysis is that we are not in this mess because there has been lack of good policies. There have always been good policies. The biggest problem has been on the implementation of good policies. Another frightening thing in our country, people who are good and they are the majority, people who are honest and they are the majority, people want to see integrity in politics and they are in the majority, people want to see transparency in politics and they are in the majority, people want to see justice and they are in the majority. But the nature of our politics as it has been practiced has caused such a toxic environment that most of those people stay out of it. That's another problem we have in this country. You bump into so many good people. Lawyers, doctors, accountants, teachers, nurses, people of all walks of life who are good, who cause success wherever they are. Tell them to join politics. They will flee from you. It's not that there has ever been lack of good people in governments, even in parties. There have always been good people in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, until now. The problem has only been that we have never had a concentration or a dominant either within a party or in government that would be the good people. They are always in a minority, they are always marginalized, they are always manipulated, 
And until we resolve that, I highly doubt whether there's going to be any other formula. Nature hates vacuums. Once there's a vacuum, it will be filled. So for those of you Ugandan people who keep saying politics is a dirty game, you don't want to go in there and get maligned. You don't want mud to be thrown at you. You know one thing. When you don't go in, someone else will go in. So if the dominant force in the politics is of people who want to advance themselves as individuals rather than advance collective interests, that's what will keep reaping. Two, if you keep saying that politics is dirty, who on earth do you think is going to clean it up? We intend as the lands for national transformation. And on this, I really like also to request my brothers on the opposition side. Honorable Mao, Honorable Chagulani. As you advance the movement which you heard, Honorable Chagulani, Honorable Mao, as you advance the Democratic Party, this is something that I think we need to act on in concert that we practice politics in a way that becomes more and more attractive to good people. <laughs> How can anybody think that there is any other formula? Until there is a shift in the balance of forces, that the good people become the majority in politics, we will keep complaining endlessly. We know that those in government can't clean up politics. They have no will. They have no capacity. They're just trapped. So the burden falls <laughs> on our shoulders. So as we liaise with the sister parties, we will keep focused on that as the Alliance for National Transformation. Even as we go down to build structures, even as we go out to do whatever we do, our main purpose is to ensure that people see us through what we say, through what we do, and hopefully we do it in such a manner that good people get attracted to us. And they keep flowing in and flowing in until there is a clear balance of forces in favor of people who are good. Not only in a structural form, but across generations. So that when one set of leaders is leaving, the next set of leaders that steps in is almost a replica in thinking and in actions because of the culture, the organizational culture that would have established in the organization. That's the only way we can succeed. We will do everything that is within our human capabilities flat out cut through whatever resistance there might be. Train a generation that will ensure that even those of us who are ahead, when we fall, they keep moving. Until we achieve that. Because at the end of the day, this is not just about us as Uganda. It's a deeper issue than that. We are a people who live in an environment of humiliation as a people. And yet it is within our powers, it is within our capabilities, we don't have to add the will, and there's nothing that any other society that has achieved that 
that we are not capable of achieving ourselves. So we're going to focus a lot on that. Reach out to the young people. The Bible says that whatever a man sows or a woman, so shall he or she reap. You cannot plant a seed of a lemon and go to reap an orange from a lemon tree. A lemon is bitter. You plant the seed of a lemon tree as day follows night. You will reap a bitter fruit. You want a sweet fruit? Plant an orange. Two, we will have to do a lot. Honorable Chagurani, Honorable Mao. <laughs> our society has been so crushed, we have even forgotten our traditions. Even our grandfathers, even our fathers knew that when you go to the field and you plant maize, that you have to wait for four months to reap it. It's a basic understanding. They knew it. We seem to have forgotten that. We've been pushed a level where people think that you can plant a seed today, and then two days after that, they see you in the garden going to reap. What form of madness can that be? So we are dealing with a mindset problem. Even when you wait for the four months, there are a number of things that one has to do. It's not just the planting. You have got to go there and weed. At times when it's dry, you must water the plants. Some of the crops even have a much longer process before you put it on the table and eat it. When General Seven carries a sack of money, you find excitement all over the country. Youth waiting for a bag of money. How many youth do we have in this country? There are more than 20 something million people. It's simply not possible that anybody can give them money, seed money. But it's deliberate. It's something that those who are Because when you want to govern a people without resistance, you crush their spirits. You reduce them to a point where they think they cannot achieve anything on their own. And therefore they must beg. We must change that understanding. We must change that philosophy. The Chinese say that rather than giving a man fish, train them how to fish. If you require to fish, they'll go fish. We must change the philosophy of governance in this country. Again, the philosophy that drives us as the ANT. Because there are two philosophies wherever you go, anywhere in the world. Whether consciously or unconsciously, any group of people in power will follow one of the two. There are those who believe that the end justifies the means, which means that you can do anything simply to get into power. They are there. They are all over the world. They are here. Our philosophy, we deeply believe, is that that has to be changed. So that our people, our population, gets to understand that the process is as important as the outcome. Changing mindsets is the toughest thing that you can get engaged with. A building like this, I think, can be put up possibly in a year or two, even like the one which is across. 
A or two or three, you can have a building there. Even a 20th floor building. But changing mindsets is tough. So we call upon all Ugandans who want solutions, who want us to influence our future, do everything humanly possible. When you are in restaurants, when you are in taxis, when you are in the gardens, wherever you are, focus on the change of mindsets. There are no quick fixes to the development of a country. But once people understand that they have got the capability to lift themselves from any situation and they understand it well and they do the commitment, there's nothing which is impossible. And therefore we must spend a lot of time on the issue of the change of mindsets. We are going to build the Alliance for National Transformation so that all of us can fulfill our potential and pay our full debt to the next generation. As I end, these young people who were here and what they were communicating to you, all of them are under 15. They come from different regions of the country. They are not old enough to join any party. But they are concerned about their future. And they were talking to us, the leaders, telling us what kind of future they want to see. They are 52. They are 52 percent of our population. So colleagues who are in ANT, all that we must put our focus on, our energies, our resources, is to respond to what these young people were asking. <laughs> if we can create tips, all of us who are in ANT, that any time you feel like faltering, you listen to what they were talking about. Because we are human, temptations come. But that we can keep listening to that message. I know that there is a generation ahead of us and it is asking questions. And that it is those questions we need to respond to. In another 30 years, we are going to become 100 million people. God forbid, if we are to reach there when we, see, when we are still in a political mess. So we in the Alliance for National Transformation, as I've already indicated, the values that we stand for, which the Honorable Ali Salaso also enumerated, While we focus on the immediate, which is 2021, we must fit it in the medium long term because we want to build a party that outlives us. We want it to be written in the books of history, even when we have already passed on. Anybody reading history of this country, 300 years down the road, to know that Alliance for National Transformation was launched on 22nd of May 2019. Tighten your belts. Starting next week, we are going to walk every village, every parish, every sub county, every constituency, every district. Because of what those kids were asking for. As I've already indicated,